there. Now, I'm delighted to say we're joined by Mayo Senior Football Assistant Manager Stephen Rochford, who has uh, come on board as one of this year's ambassadors for the Go Mile, proudly supported by AIB. This Christmas, AIB are encouraging communities across the island of Ireland to step up together and re-establish the tradition of taking part in the Go Mile. People and communities across Ireland can step up together to take part by visiting goldmile.org. Stephen, good morning to you. Morning, Ger. How are you keeping? Where will your gold mile be? Will you do it on Christmas Day, or are you uh, strictly a Stephen's Day recovering type of uh, gold miler? <coughs> yeah, I, 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 I'd, I'd rather put that the family orientated uh, gold miler on on Stephen's Day. Uh, work off the, the little bit of turkey. And uh, is there is there training on Christmas Day? Are you one of those um, uh, hardcore no. counties that gets everybody out and says right? <laughs> No, 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 no. We allow them uh, uh, un- unwrap their, their their Santa presents and uh, and lead them to it. We'll uh, we'll finish up on the twenty second, and we'll uh, we'll get back in. I think on the on the twenty eighth or the twenty ninth. Um, I, 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 you've obviously been around the intercounty scene now for the best part of a decade, and you, before that, like with a, a very high performing <coughs> club team. So you've seen all kind of sides of it. Are we getting a little bit better at allowing players to manage their own times, or uh, is it still? as regimented if not more regimented than maybe it would have been when you came in um i think there's i think <clears throat> i think there's definitely a balance to be got on it um i, I certainly my own um outlook in it is that uh you know all these all these guys are, are adults they need to be treated like like adults so uh i think we, we put a schedule in place but as regards hard and fast rules around do's and do nots i think that's that, that should be very very limited um so for for like when I was in Curfin, we never had any sort of drinking ban or any of the that sort of rule set. Uh, and and the same in Mayo and and and, and again in Donegal, there was never a sense of a, um you know I think I think probably it, my my view on it, Ger, is when you start setting rules up in front of people, rules end up getting broken and and they put you into positions that maybe. Um, there was unintended consequences for us. So so the guy goes out for a meal with with girlfriend or wife or family member has a glass of wine versus somebody that that uh, takes the mickey out of it both guys are drinking who 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 gets who gets punished if that's the, the right term so i think you're 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 trying to make guys make good judgment calls it's what you expect them to do when they're when they're in the i suppose the performance arena so um it's it's like that you know with their off-field activities we had David Moore on last week, and he was basically saying that things have calmed down a, a significant amount, really. And he just even he was uh, talking about other clubs. You know, you would have seen the the club charter going viral on social over the last decade or so. And he was like, "That was all madness," you know. Like this, this is this is lads' hobbies. And the split season has definitely helped. He was saying from from that perspective. So at Corfin, there was never any charters or any of that kind of stuff. No, no, certainly not. Um, more, more, more concerned what was happening on the field, and then I think those, those, and you refer to it at the at the outset, those high performing teams, those ambitious teams, in 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 many many cases, they self regulate, um, you know, they they police uh, all those those uh, aspects, the behaviours, you know, if you want to use that 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 term, and that's that's where you want it to be, um, people, you know, leading, and 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 I suppose older guys, all right, who who might have a bit more of um you know a tendency to, to to you know tell the young fellas what what not to do and, and and what they should be doing um i think it's it's better by them you know role modeling uh the way it, it needs to be and, and thankfully in in any of the environments i've been in um we've had we've had people to put their hand up in in that regard and show the the, the new guys this is, this is the way it is if you want to perform consistently at the top level um, Stephen, when you mentioned Curriff in there, like we've been kind of speaking on the show the last week or so about the, I guess the quality level <clears throat> of club football at the minute. When you look at the likes of Glen and Kilmacud and the levels they've reached, I got a little bit of bother for my take. I kind of was almost saying the. I Kilma- saw that Shane. You I did. Saw that. Well, there you go. <laughs> so you know where I'm headed with this. But um, I, I was kind of making the point that Kilmacud would certainly uh, compete in a Division Four level. Maybe a Division Three level as well. Ah, you went a bit further than that. I did. I, I think you were saying they'd win the Talton Cup. Well, I, I think I, you might be right, Stephen. Am I incorrect in, in saying no, that? No, hundred percent. You'd be right, Stephen. So, wh- where where is club football at, and, and and how far off or far on the mark was I? Basically, he wants to know what Curra Finn have won the Talton. You can say it now. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
I, 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 I think the, the, the level of detail that's going into all inter-county teams preparation, I'll, that I think it's, it, it's significantly difficult to compare a, a, a top club team, be it from Currafin, Dr. Crokes in their time when, 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 when Gooch was, was running the show there with Johnny Buckley to, you know, Kill McCud, Kill Coo, Glenn. I think what you, what you got to remember is that in an inter-county setting, you know, their 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 most average footballer is the best club footballer, possibly for for their club. And when you bring that all together, um, you know, teams from Division Three, Four, um, I I I think uh, would would easily well not easily. I think that's a little bit disparaging as well to, to, to say. I think they'd they'd uh, they'd easily hold their own though uh, against uh, any of the top club teams. That's me told. I think that that is certainly me told. Like I guess the the, the overall point though was. The, the level at which club is at, even compared to, say, 10 years ago, is just is unbelievable. And the split season is only, is only going to send that northward. Yeah, and I, I think that's absolutely correct. I think, you know, club football over the last 20 years, you know, like I, I was fortunate enough to play with a, an All-Ireland club winning team and cross the line, and that, that was at the, the, the start of the, the noughties. And no one, seeing, and, and I know that we, we put in a lot of, Time and effort now, but I but going through, you know, whatever seven or eight years ago with Curra Finn, um, and now seeing it on the intercounty side, I think as the intercounty bar rises, the club bar is uprising because those players see what's happening at intercounty and they go back to their clubs and they're trying to bring a version of that uh, into the club and and you know there's you know that bar has risen steadily, and I think probably in some cases there, there may be a widening at club level in, in certain places. Um, and and that's still to say that the the club scene is is a much better place than probably it was you know ten years ago. But I think that the inter county at the pace in which that's continually improved has just ensured that there will remain that gap. Do you, do, have you noticed, Stephen? I'm sure you get to plenty of club matches, but um, I guess a, a parallel between the level and quality and style of club football in a county versus that of, of that county's inter-county team. Like, <clears throat> I know in Donegal, for example, the club football, very often low-scoring matches, and sometimes it can be reflected in the, in, in the county setup. Like, is that, is that a, a trend we're starting to see more and more of? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, I, I, I don't think it always necessarily reflects, what, you know, that the, the club scene uh, reflects the, 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 the inter-county uh, and the club. I don't think they, they necessarily mirror each other. Um, I do think, though, that you know teams reflect you know one of what the the the, the manager, the coach, see as, as as being the strength of the team, and it's it's I think it's it's very fair that to say that in in um, in Donegal, it's it's very much a possession based scene for for, for the club teams. Um, you know, pe- people might might term that a little bit more defensive or or whatever it is, but. Um, no, having got to the club games in Mayo um, this year, I, I was pleasantly surprised. I hadn't been to many club games between COVID and and whatnot over over the previous three years. But um, you know, seeing uh, teams showing um, a right level of ambition as regards looking to move the ball uh, accurately and um, you know at pace, and I think you know that's what we would love to try and do with 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 Mayo, no doubt. But um, I don't I don't think it's it's it, it's it's Absolutely reflective, but obviously it does have a, a part to play. It's no more than the 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 previous point I was making around what uh, the inter county player sees in the, in in that inter county environment. They look to bring back some of those to, to the club, and possibly it, it it reflects a little bit as regards maybe the style of play. Um, and then if 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 at the same time players have been consistently playing that level. It, it does become a little bit trickier then to break that down from uh, an inter-county point of view. Uh, I don't know if you're watching the World Cup with your analyst hat on, but um, certainly one of the trends that has emerged is that having possession doesn't really matter as much anymore as how quickly you manage to do something with it. And so fewer and fewer teams are trying to play the tiki-taka Barcelona style and more teams are trying to do what Liverpool do when they get the ball is to get it forward quickly to their forward players who, as soon as you affect the turnover, if you can get it forward to them fast they're more likely to be in a one-on-one or in a slightly favourable uh, situation. Is there a way that we can get this into Gaelic games where it's um, you know, less of the, OK, we have the ball, we're going to sit here for five minutes and we're going to keep it and see what happens? I think it probably is happening anyway. Yeah, well, I think it's... Uh, I think, I think, Ger, 
any team that that's looking to go out and and look at, to really compete at the top level needs to have a number of different um, arms to their attack when they're in possession. Uh, obviously, as as you've alluded to, the easiest thing to do is to to is to get the ball forward, or sorry, the the, the the most desired way is to get the ball forward as quickly as possible, where there's more space, where there's less bodies to compete with, to create that that higher percentage score shot. Um, but it isn't always as easy as that. There's circumstances in relation to restarts, free kicks, um, good tactical uh, foul and substitutions. All of these bits also lead in, uh, and good opposition defending to slow slow down the upper the opposition as well. Um, so I, I think uh, I think. The possession element will remain, but at the same time, I think teams that want to compete need to be a bit more adventurous. I think they need to be able to play with um, uh, no no element of, of fear uh, or failure. Um, we need to be able to take, like a good decision will always remain a good decision. So if that means moving the ball at pace, it means running the ball, if it means holding on to it, I think from a coach's point of view is that you want the, the players to be in a position to be able to make those decisions and execute those um patterns when <clears throat> excuse me when the opposition present whatever the conundrum is so if they've played with 12 or 13 behind the ball well then you, you need to break that down if you can get a quick turnover and you can get the ball forward you need to also be skilled uh, and everybody to be on the same wavelength around what that looks like yeah okay i uh, can i ask you a little bit about um you you were very young as a manager having the success that you had at club and county level and you've gone kind of reverse to many people back into setups without being the manager, having already been the manager. I don't know if that was by design, if you felt like that was something you wanted to do. What, what was your thinking behind that? And, and retrospectively, what do you make of that uh, career journey that you've been on? So I suppose, um, Joe, or uh, Ger, sorry, I've got my nights and, and mornings yeah. uh, backwards there. Um, <clears throat> I suppose the when I, when I started out in coaching, you know, you know, nearly 20 years ago, I remember, um, I think, I think it was at a, a club function only a, a, a week or so ago and saw a, a picture when I took over the other 21 team across the line in 2003. So, um, it, it was about, it was about coaching really at that point. And I had had really good experiences through school around seeing, uh, good, good teachers, good coaches, uh, showing how, how you can play a good brand of football. And that really interested me. The management side of it didn't really. Um, so though, though in club, manager and coach, you, you're, you're, you're a jack of all trades back then. Um, and then going with Curra Finn, it was very much hands-on manager into a, a, and coach role. Um, and I suppose then when, you, <clears throat> when the Mayo job came up, um, there isn't that uh, opportunity to coach as often. It's a, it's a much more you know relationship management it's it's the players it's county board it's media it's sponsors there's, there's a number of different stakeholders um and whilst i enjoyed that um a, you know i i missed the, the 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 coaching element um obviously when i stepped away from mayo um i had uh, at that point plans to 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 remain uh, in the intercounty game the opportunity arose then to get to get in um as a coach with with Donegal. Um, a top team um, so I suppose that's just the way things lined up um, and I really I really enjoyed that really I think um, you know from from that guy that was uh, that, that started off with Curra Finn as a coach to into doing some coaching limited as it was uh, in Mayo um, and, and I'm with Donegal I feel now that I'm that I am a much better coach much better appreciation around again what, what's happening in the game um, and 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 learned uh, uh, so much in in Donegal uh, with with the national league campaigns and the ultra championship. So um, I, I'm not saying that I that that returning to a manager's role isn't something that that I'd like to do again uh, at a later stage. Um, I did consider putting my name in the hat when when the Mayo job came up, um, but just the way again the cards the cards fell. Uh, a fit as a system manager and coach, just 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 was something that 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 suited and fit it better for me at this moment in time. You mentioned uh, Donegal there, Stephen, and and it's, I think it's still house private up there with the the news that Michael Murphy is is hanging up the boots, the intercounty boots for uh, for now anyway. Um, like 
just what, 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 what made him such a great footballer as someone who, who would have worked with him there for a, for a few years as selector in Donegal and, and where does he rank in terms of the all-time greats? Yeah, so, so, so one or two people have asked me that over, over time, not just in the, in, in the last month, but I think there's a, there's a, there's a certain element of curiosity around Mayo. Uh, his dad having been a Mayo man and yeah. memories of 2012 still, still linger um, of what could have been. Um, if the Gardaí had stationed uh, Mick Murphy back in back closer to 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 to, to Ballina. but um, in that uh, I think I think what you get with with, with, with Michael is is firstly he's uh, he, he he's a, he's just a good person he's a really good person um, you know he's he's a phenomenal footballer uh, uh, and he's an outstanding leader um, and I think it's probably rare that you get get all of those uh, all together I've I've, I've been fortunate to to club. Um, in Cross Malina and to Mayo to Curfin and, and Donegal to have coached and played with with, with, with many great players. Uh, it, it'd be unfair to, to others to sort of say Michael was was, was the greatest and, and forget other people like Kieran McDonald and James Nallan, Paddy Gardner, Mike Moyles, Kieran Fitzgerald and Curfin or whatever. So I would say he's definitely one of the greatest, um, without without doubt. Um, he and and I think you know. He'd never do. He'd never do anything, uh, or expect, or ask you to do something that he wasn't willing and able to do himself, and, and probably had done previously. Um, and that's, I think, is is a is testament to the standards that that that, that Michael lived by, played by, um, and he, he certainly is a is a loss to Donegal. But he'd be the first to say Donegal goes on, uh, and they'll have they'll have new. Michael Murphy esque. Uh, there's a lot of good quality footballers there. I think you know why Michael has departed, and, and and Neil McGee obviously had retired earlier this summer. Um, they have an under twenty one or under twenty team that that ran that All Ireland winning Tyrone team into extra time and were beaten by I think a goal at, at the, the tail end of the game. So there's still good quality coming through in, in Donegal. So I expect them to 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 to, to be at it again uh, in 2023. Uh, it's funny, Stephen. We had um, we had Morris Deegan, uh, uh, now retired in the county ref on the, on the show last week, and he was referencing Michael Murphy as well. Uh, one of the things he spoke about, and look, I know you've you've been asked in the last couple of days about the the GA rules and and how much they're changing and how often they're changing. Uh, one thing we spoke about to, to Morris about was was perhaps miking up referees. Um, Referee abuse is something that, that seems to be far too commonplace in the game, and I'm sure as Mayo manager, you, you had to put up with social media abuse yourself at different points. But uh, do you think that's a good idea in club and county, perhaps making up referees? Um, I, th- I think there'll obviously be pros and cons to it. I think it's a, it's a case of trying to see that the pros outweigh the cons. I think um, uh, I think from a from a, a pros point of view, it, it would definitely. Uh, I think from a spectator and from a, a management and player point of view, would definitely give an insight as regards why certain decisions are made or or interpretation of of, of certain rules uh, are had. And I think that's that 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 ultimately I think is is the most frustrating piece is that you get a referee on, maybe on the same day in two different parts of the country uh, in implementing an interpretation of of, of the game. Um, I, I wouldn't think that the I don't think there's a there's a, there's a big problem um, uh, with refereeing or anything like that in the country, but I think at, at key times that there there can be um, there, there can be big calls. I, I think if I was to go back to the All Ireland final this year, that I think the, the John Daly um, uh, won down at the hill late in the second half against Kerry, whereby I think every second person in the, in, in Co Park was debating, well, was it a, should it have been a free out or should it have been a Kerry free or you know, and I, I think probably in in those circumstances, it certainly has has benefit. At the same time, you know, uh, how how would referees be about it? I think, you know, in in you know the opportunity um, there for, for for everybody to be accountable, and it may also drive the proper behaviours from players as regards that that uh, commentary back to to, to referees. Um, if if it was to to help with that. Um, and uh, I suppose breathe the, the consistency. I think that it would be a, a positive uh, aspect to, to trial anyway. Um, I, I, I know that there's other uh, other rules that maybe the the, the GA are are, are, are tempted with with trialing and and 
you know, micing up a referee um, might, might be something worth trialling for a National League or something. Hey, just a final one for me, Stephen. I'm just looking at the uh, the Connacht Championship draw in front of me here, and it's <laughs> it's an interesting one because you look at the likes of London, Sligo, New York, and Leitrim. I mean, one of the four will, will contest the Connacht final this year, and in turn compete in the All Ireland rather than the Talton Cup. So for yourselves in Mayo, you have Roscommon in the quarter final, and then the winner plays Galway. So it's not the easiest of draws you could have had. No, um, it's not. It's 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 as tough as it, it gets. Um, but but that's just the way the draw goes. I mean, there's 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 no um, there's no getting away from it. Um, you know, we we have had just um, had a, a a tough national league campaign, um, and then you're out. You know, either fourteen days after the tail end of the, the national league or seven days after the national league final. So um, it is what it is. Um, as you, as you get into the the, the the further uh, advance in, in the championship and hopefully we will be there games come back to back um, and they'll be you know by the by the nature of the top 16 teams uh, between uh, uh, provincial champions and national league places um, it's going to be a really tough championship either way so um, the kind of championship has been a um, a tough hunting ground over the last uh, the last period for, for, for Mayo I think the, the, the rise of of Galway um, uh, last year uh, and, and obviously pushing on to the All-Ireland final has, will have risen the confidence in the, in, in the group and also across the, the Galway County. And then Roscommon are under a new management that's going to bring a new energy and new ideas to them. So, you know, our focus primarily uh, at the moment is just getting that strong uh, pre-season foundation in. Uh, we have Galway in the first round of the National League, followed by Armagh, and, and, and they're our immediate focus. But that that, that Roscommon Championship game is, is just off, just slightly off uh, centre of the radar at the moment. But as as the season moves uh, on, that will that that will that will certainly become uh, much more the the focus point in in, in the in the coming weeks and months. Is Leroy coming back? We hope, Ger. We 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 hope. You know, that's that's a that's a big part in Mayo. We hope for a lot of things. Um, look, uh, you know, Lee is Lee is considering that. I mean, he's put in a lot of miles uh, with 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 Mayo over uh, the last decade. Um, and look, he's he's needed a bit of time. We 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 hope he will, but we just have to wait and see. Stephen, great to have you back. Thanks a million. Cheers. Best Lovely. of luck with everything. Thanks, guys. Happy Christmas. Okay. You too. That's uh, Stephen Rochford there, assistant manager of the uh, Mayo Footballers, helping to launch AIB sponsorship of the Gold Mile, a great tradition that you could definitely help to re-establish uh, at family level this year.